Hi, I'm Belinda Allen, and in this Power BI Tiny Tip, I want to talk about using parameters to give you some flexibility on the data sets that you're connecting to. So specifically, I have this report. I'm looking in the query editor for the same report we've been using all along in several of our blog postings. So let me go back and pull the query editor back up. And both of these happen to be coming from SQL Server. This happens to be a GP database. If I want to take my SQL Server connections of a report I'm building and give it to somebody else who's also using GP, then what I can do is utilize parameters and a Power BI template to make it easier. So in the query editor, I'm going to go ahead and first create some parameters. And you could do this basically for anything. I'm going to click on Manage Parameters because I don't have any out there right now. And you can see my parameter list is empty. So I'm going to tell it I want to create a new one. And the first one I want to create will be the SQL Server. And you would normally put in a good description of enter your SQL Server you know, name here or instance. I'm going to skip that. Always, always come in and set the data type. I know you might have discovered that you can get around not doing that, but there are a few functionalities that are going to give you grief if that data type is not correct. So go ahead and set it. Now, I'm going to use text because this field would be text. You saw on my example when I was logged in, I am connected to BusyBee. That's the name of my server. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the current value, which is BusyBee. If I click OK, it'll close this window out and I'd have to reopen it. But I could go ahead and just click on New and add a next one. And the next one is going to be the database ID. And this is the SQL database ID. So normally you'd go out and populate a description. But I'm going to come in and enter my database ID. And now I'm going to click OK. And now you can see I have these two queries over here, which are nothing but parameters. And I can change the parameter value by just clicking in here, and it would look at either another SQL Server or another database or both. Now, what I need to do now is for my existing data connections, my data sources, I need to utilize these parameters instead of the hard coding that I entered in. So I'll start with customers. I'm going to come over to the applied steps and click on the gear for source. And this is where I hard coded in those same values. I'm going to change this by clicking on the ABC and tell it I want to enter in a parameter. And the parameter I want to use in the field is the one for SQL Server. And the same for database, only this time I'll choose database. And then I'll click OK. And it's going to go through and do a little quick refresh against these new parameters, which happen to be the same. And the fact that I got data at the end tells me that I had it working right. So I'm going to do the same thing here under source change this to parameter, and change this to parameter for the database ID. And now once that's done, it's doing a little refresh. I click on the end. I still have my data all as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on Close and Apply. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick save here. Now I want to create a template. So if I just do File, Export, and create a Power BI template, I can enter my template information in here. One of the things I like to do is make sure I put in the connections that I'm using. So whether it be a view or a table or a stored procedure, that way they know what they need to have permission to. And I'm just going to save that. It has a PBIT extension for a Power BI template. I'll click on New, get me a new Power BI report. Now I'm going to go File. I'm going to do an import, and I'm going to import a Power BI template. And I'll find my template. There it is. Now I'm prompted with this information. What SQL Server do you want, and what database ID do you want? So I'll enter in my SQL Server ID, BusyB, and my database is 2. Now if I had put things in the description, I would have had a little I for the information there, and it would have told me what I need to put in this field. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Load. And watch what happens. It's going to connect to all the data. It's going to run all the queries, edits that I made in the query editor. And then it's going to remember everything that I wanted done. And I'm still in this untitled one that I just created. 
So that's a great way to build reports against a test environment, and then you could deploy them in a production environment. As usual, I hope this helps.